Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast video. My name is Zan Ta from Repo Products. Our screencast video today will take a look at Autodesk Inventor and taking the information out of it, whether it is a part or assembly, and exporting it to ADSK file format to bring into Autodesk Revit. Here I am in Autodesk Inventor 2017. I have an assembly here of a test station. And in order to initiate the command to turn this file into an ADSK file format, we want to head over to the Environments tab of the ribbon. In there, there is a Begin panel. We'll click BIM Exchange. When you do this, you'll get a BIM Exchange contextual tab and you're inside the command. Typical things you'll want to do are uh, orienting the UCS if necessary, putting any connectors for ductwork, piping, so on and so forth if you need to, checking the design to verify that the inventor designed there isn't anything strange going on. Here the design check tells me that the complexity is high and there are over 33,000 faces which can cause issues with exporting to ADSK file format. If this is the case, and you get the warning, then go ahead and simplify the model. You can click Export Building Component Command here, and what ends up happening is it's going to again verify the design, and if it's complex, it's going to ask you to simplify the model or keep going. So I'm going to click Yes to keep going for now. And uh, if there are any parts that are invisible, they will also be published. So I'm going to click OK. It automatically looks at the file and opens up the Import Building Components dialog box. In here, you can specify what kind of file format you want it to export out as. An assembly file will export it as ADSK. A part will export out as a .RFA or a .ADSK. And then lastly, the IFC file format. The component type, you can click this little folder right here and specify for the Omni class table where does it fit in. And this may allow you to increase and add more BIM data to the actual object before it gets exported. Here under Component Properties, if I click this little Model Properties Filter command, it'll list only properties with value. And it will basically go through and put a check mark for any content that it sees. Click OK. But then you also have to click Model Properties box right here. And it inputs that data into this dialog box. Uh, if the cell is the cyan blue, I can't click inside and make changes. But if it's white, I can go in and make changes, say inputting some basic data like this. And maybe even a URL. When you're finished, you can click OK. And what ends up happening is it will ask you to save it in a name and a location. I'll click it. I hit test station and hit save. When that's finished, it'll run through its process. And the Autodesk Inventor export uh, dialog box will pop up and it'll let you know the progress of what it's doing. This export process can take quite a while depending on how big your assembly is or how big your part is and how much data is contained. The more complex the assembly, the harder it is going to take uh, to export it out to ADSK file format. And a lot of times, if it's too complex, it won't work. Even though it says it does, and you look at the Revit file, um, you're not going to see anything. But it also gives you a translation report. So if you click Yes, it opens up the HTML report and tells you the file, tells you the published file all the basic data, the contents, and what was successful in exporting, and the BIM data that got exported. So now let's verify this in within Revit. I head over to Revit, I click Open, because you can open up an ADSK file. You notice it says right here under Files of Type. And we'll pick that test station, we'll click Open. Now what's interesting to note too, when you do this uh, ADSK export, if you will, from Inventor, uh, the ADSK file and the content inside will have this bounding box. Uh, not sure exactly why the bounding box is there, but it's something that you have to select and delete uh, because it's kind of in the way. 
So as soon as this pops up, I'll show you what we have. And so here's that bounding box. And if I select it, I can unpin it. And then I'll delete it using the delete key. I can then select the actual 3D geometry, which is pinned down. I can unpin it. And then I can explode it if I need to explode it. The reason you may want to explode it is if you may need to manipulate it further. And that depends, again, on how the solid objects from Inventor get translated to uh, Revit 3D geometry, Boolean and based operation G 3D geometry, such as extrude, blend, sweep, so on and so forth. So for example, if I select this tabletop, uh, it may or may not have grips that allows me to make adjustments. It may have property information in here that defines length, width, height, so on and so forth. If I head over to the family types window command, you'll see the model property information from Inventor came across. And the identity data also came across, especially where I typed in model manufacturer, so on and so forth. If this particular uh, assembly had parametric information that defined width, length, height, depth, and all other types of dimensional parameters, they would come across and they would be listed here under model properties. So you can actually control the sizing, if you will, of this piece of equipment. Now that you have it opened in Inventor, in uh, Revit, you just need to save it. And if you go to save it, the save dialog box opens up, and you have the ability to save it as a .rfa family file. So I hit save, and now that family file is created. So when we take a look at this workflow from Inventor to Revit, we have to really sit down and think about how long would it take for us to build this particular object clean from scratch in Revit and have its parametric data inputted versus how would you do it in Inventor and how long would it take? And what ultimately is going to be how are you going to use this data uh, will help dictate as to which way is better to do, to do the work, to create the content from scratch. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.